Christians around the world are hearing the words of Mary as we prepare for the celebration, the awareness, the intentional remembering that God is with us. From Luke's account of the Gospel, in the first chapter, in the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored, because the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those who, with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has then pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of the servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to Abraham's descendants forever. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Mary. On this reading, you know, it, it changed this morning. I, I had this whole thing worked out in my head, but early this morning as I was doing my thing, it's kind of like watching sausage get made. It's not very pretty, but... <laughs> <laughs> The phrase, in the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. These words that this woman uttered in the presence of her cousin Elizabeth have stayed with the church for 1900 plus years. Mary was raised in, her, in the faith of her ancestors. A faith that had seen them the very heights of power. The reign of Solomon and the glories of his kingdom were theirs. The faith of their fathers, though, also included the time in exile. First under the Babylonians and then the Assyrians. the depths of my soul, I praise God. <clears throat> they remembered these ancestors of hers. They remembered the time in slavery. <clears throat> and they were in the pens of Egypt. And they remembered that their God was with them during those dark years. They remember the calling of Moses. The deliverance of Joseph. They remember Isaac and Rebecca and Jacob and Rachel. They remembered all of 
these names, these people who had shared stories and accounts and the belief that God was with them. They looked back even further and saw the faith of Abraham and Sarah. And they remembered that God had called their ancestors from there to here and was with them every step of the way. <coughs> from the depths of my soul I praise God. Now, there was a discussion this week among some uh, colleague friends of mine and well, let me ask you, not you personally, but you as a generic, everybody. <clears throat> there are different ways that we can read the scriptures. We know this. We know that there are dozens upon dozens of translations, versions, editions of the scriptures. We know this. <coughs> Intellectually, we can rationalize. But how do you read, and how do you hear this? One of the discussion points was, <clears throat> scripture is typically either prescriptive or descriptive. Prescriptive means it's valid for all time, from the first moment it was written down to the end of time. Descriptive means it, it was true for them, but we live in the 21st century. There's something that we do not do that the Bible directly commands us to do because we know that you know we don't stone people, even though you might want to some days. We don't stone people anymore. It's kind of frowned on. So, when you hear something like this from Mary, out of the depths of my soul, I praise God. Is that descriptive? Or, what's the other one? Prescriptive. Prescriptive, thank you. <coughs> I knew it was a good point. I just <laughs> so, which is it? What, what do you think? It's prescriptive. Wow. Now think about that for a second. Does, does anyone say, ah, it was just a nice flowery speech that Luke recorded that may or may not have been said, and it's nice to trot out in late December, but, you know, Anyone want to disagree with? Where are you going to go with it? Where? Okay. <laughs> Funny you should ask. <coughs> I got your money afterwards. <laughs> if this is descriptive, if this is just the belief, the personal reflection <coughs> of a woman who lived you know, nearly 2,000 years ago and her words are included in our sacred scripture just because they're nice insights into the faith that people have had and continue to have. Or, if it's prescriptive, think about what Mary <coughs> is doing first. She is acknowledging that the ancestors who passed down their faith generation to generation to generation uh, to her very own time and down through the ages to ours, they were right. Because there were a lot of gods 
during the time of Mary and Joseph. There were temples to every deity known in the ancient world. But Mary came from a group of people who had the audacity to say, there is one God, not a bunch. There's one God. And this one God is here. Now, not here geographically, but here with us. Now, if she had stopped there, my soul magnifies the Lord. Or in the King James, my soul doth magnify the Lord. That's a word we need to bring back. Go. We need to bring back. Go. Doth. Doth. It's not dose. It's not Homer Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doth. <laughs> we can bring this back. <laughs> or we can say it's not relevant anymore. But for Mary to say that her soul, from the depths of her soul, you know that phrase, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? That's what Mary's talking about here. And if she reaches down to the very depths of her soul that God created and said, I have looked. I have searched, and there is no other God. What a crazy thing to say. But that's what, in fact, that's what we Christians believe, that there is one God. We know that even in the 21st century, there is a multitude of gods being worshipped. You know, it's been said that between November 1st and January 15th, there are, what, 29, 30 different religious festivals out there. So what makes you think that what we're going to do Tuesday is the only one? That's arrogant. That's a bold statement to make. But Mary says to us, down through the ages, this is it. This is what you've been looking for. This is what, not only what you need, not only is God with me, but God is with you as well. Because we do not have a possessive faith. Because had Mary just thought those words, we wouldn't have them. But she said it in front of somebody else. She said to Elizabeth, this is what I believe. This is what I believe. And because she said that, it got repeated. Now we don't know if it was Mary or Elizabeth or somebody else in the room who shared it. Somehow it made its way to Luke, who wrote it down. Somehow it survived. Think about all the words that have ever been uttered by the human race. We have these. My soul. Depth of my soul, I praise God. What an amazing thing to be remembered for. Oh, by the way, she also happened to be the mother of Jesus, the Son of God. That's pretty impressive. But, God existed before Mary. From the depths of her soul, the soul that God created, 
She found the answer, the meaning of life, the, her purpose. That 1900 years later, we know what she said. We feel it. All of this music, all of the flowers, all of the, the preparation that we do is just scratching the surface. Because this prescriptive act, if you, like Mary, accept the premise of God, not everybody in our society does. But if you accept the idea of God, okay, what are you going to do with it? Can I keep it to yourself? Are you going to say, hey, it's just something I do? Or do you remember? Do you search your path? find evidence that satisfies your intellect, satisfies your understanding of life? Do you search out others who have had a God moment in their life? Sometimes it's a lightning bolt that knocks you off your high horse. Sometimes it's that little nudge in the right direction. Sometimes it's the laughter of a child that reminds you that this life is meant to be lived and meant to be shared because God is real. Because that's what Mary said we should do, but only if you believe it. If Tuesday morning is nothing more than something to get through, something to observe for presence or for turkey or for whatever. And it's just like any other like any other day. But if if in your soul you feel the truth of God, then oh, then the fun begins. Because Mary showed us what happens when you magnify the Lord, when you praise God from the depth of your soul. Maybe, just maybe, Mary was on to something. Look to the Marys in this congregation. How many are here today? One? Mm -hmm. Oh, two? Okay. Oh. Up here. Oh, okay. If you want to see what it's like to magnify the Lord, or to praise God to the depth of your soul, look to those women. They've been there. They've read the books. They've walked this earth, traveled around the sun a few times, and yet, and yet, they only scratched the surface. All that God is in you. They can share and praise God as they understand it but they can't praise God for you. <coughs> Only you can do that. If you do it,